what did you think of the Tyreek Hill trade? I mean, where the hell did that come from, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'd heard rumblings of it uh, a few days before it went down. And, you know, it was kind of like I think Rosenhaus kind of explained it. Once the Devontae Adams trade and contract happened, then, uh, then that kind of changed their thinking on what type of a deal they would accept to go back to Kansas City. And once the numbers got where they were headed, I think – Kansas City, um, you know, had to make a tough decision. Now, I, I talked to another GM in the league about why in the world would Kansas City move on. You know, I, I see Tyreek Hill twice a year doing the Charger games, and I know every game plan starts with him and how you keep him from beating you on, on one play, which he's done so many times. So why in the world would they ever, you know, let him leave the building? Right. And they said, look, the, the Mahomes contract, the way it was structured, he's, his base salary is only like a million and change. So there's no, that's how you end up manipulating a salary cap is you can drop those numbers down, bonus people out, amortize it over the length of the deal. Um, so they didn't really have a lot of wiggle room. And the fact that you had your left tackle in Orlando Brown on that franchise tag, there's no wiggle room. That's a big number um, that's taken up a lot of their cap space. So he said it was just going to be kind of difficult for them uh, to do that this year and going forward. They just they didn't have a ton of room. So they got some flexibility out of the deal. But that's, uh, yeah, it's not often you see somebody who's literally the most dynamic uh, weapon in the NFL that, that hits the trade market. So I guess, you know, for, for me, uh, it's clearly down to the trigger man in Miami more than not, Tua. So yeah. what, do you, what do you think of what Mike McDaniel is putting together? And do you think it could also be for Teddy Bridgewater too? What do you think? DJ. Well, I think they're going to get two. I think they'll get two every opportunity, and you know, there's, you know, there's two ways to get to a 50-yard completion, Rich. You can throw the ball 50 yards and have it caught, and the guy gets tackled, or you can throw it three yards and let him run 47 yards with it. And I think they've surrounded Tua with guys that can do the latter. I mean, when you think about the weapons they have with with Waddle and Tyree Kill, and you know, it's bubble screens, it's speed shovels, it's shallow crosses. It slants, like the stuff that he is really good at, you know, with his quick hands, quick release. He's very accurate underneath and intermediate. I think they're going to just try and get those guys the ball out in space and, and make the rest of the league try and tackle him. You know, Gesicki is another one. He's one of the faster tight ends in the NFL. Um, so they have got a track team uh, around Tua. Well, I guess, and that's what I'm saying, is Tyreek going to spend some time this fall going, well, Pat would have gotten that to me, or man, um, you know, I, Pat would have known that's where I was going with it, and, and the ball goes elsewhere, and then he'll just count his zeros going back to the huddle, right? Or or will there be a time, what's more likely, that happening, or Mahomes going, man, we just we, we just miss Tyreek. It's such, it's such a difference maker for us that that guy's gone what's more likely do you think to happen this year i think Daniel? i think that i think that tyree kill chose to to make this happen it was his choice to, to kind of leave kansas city and to go to miami and he went to miami for location and lunch money and so he's got a lot of uh, a, a lot of the ladder there he's that's that was his decision Pat Mahomes, I don't think he made the decision to move on from Tyree Kill. Right. And I think that will have more of an impact on Mahomes and the Chiefs, at least, at least initially, until they can kind of figure out how to put some new pieces together. But, you know, I was looking at this this morning, Rich, and kind of saying, okay, what's a different angle that maybe we're not thinking? Yep. And you remember last year how much we talked about all the too high defense that everybody played against the Kansas City Chiefs? Yes. And it, it, it didn't stop them, but it did. It, it, slowed it down a little bit and in some key moments especially their last game of the year in the second half where they couldn't get things going and so I almost think Andy Reid's saying hey this is an opportunity for me to get a bunch of assets we've got more cap space now we can kind of recreate a little bit of how we're playing offense because the quick strike ability that had been their calling card was was taken away at least to a degree last year by scheme, and I think this is Andy's you know time to try and get ahead of the curve, which he's made a career of being ahead of the curve. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.